Next question. Jocko and Echo. How do you guys feel about the Ensign Inoue situation? Demoting yourself after time off the mat. Mm. So this was a pretty interesting question. And it's there's a guy named Ensign Inoue. And he's a, he's a old school jiu-jitsu guy, old school MMA guy. And he's a black belt in jiu-jitsu, but he fought in UFC. He fought in Pride. He was the Shudo champion. He's just a just a, a really old school kind of OG from Hawaii, by the way. From Hawaii, and just a just a really well respected guy as a fighter, mm -hmm. and a guy that you know his he 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 kind of had that warrior ethos that people talk about. You know where he would say, "Look, I'm, I'm, I would rather die in this fight than lose," and and he meant it. Mm -hmm. And so he's been, but he moved to Japan. He's of Japanese heritage, and he moved to Japan a long time ago. I mean, I want to say ten or maybe fifteen, maybe even longer. Yeah, I think longer. Yeah, I'm a, not sure. a long time ago, he moved back to Japan. He's he's, uh, you know, that's where he's kind of built his life is in Japan. And along the way, I think his last fight was maybe maybe eight to ten years ago was his last fight. And since then, you know, there was the, the horrible earthquake and the tsunami in Japan and he did work as sort of a as sort of a charity to raise money and help out those victims. So that's what he's been focused on. And he's been focused on, I guess, his family and whatever else. But in that time he 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 strayed off the mats of justice <laughs> he stopped the training and and so you know he he had other things going on in his life and he stopped training i don't recommend anybody stop training and um but for whatever reason he he stopped training and he stopped training and i, I saw a little interview with him as he was talking about this he stopped training for like 10 years mm -hmm. 10 years of no and he and he said no training he just was stopped training and now, you know, he's because he's a jujitsu guy. Eventually, jujitsu gets back in your brain, and he started getting back on the mats. And when he got back on the mats, he felt that he didn't deserve to be a black belt anymore. And it wasn't just because he was his timing was off or he was out of condition, he felt like jujitsu had had changed and he's right in the last 10 years jiu-jitsu has changed a lot mm -hmm. and you know what yesterday jiu-jitsu changed a lot and yeah. the day before i mean jiu-jitsu changes every day every day it changes I'm, I'm i'm shocked uh dean will come up with some new thing dean's very very good at coming up with new things and he comes up with a, a new thing like something i i neither one of us had thought of he probably does that once or twice a month he comes up with this new thing i might do it once every three to six months maybe where i go oh, okay i thought of something new and i'm all excited and dean goes well no just put your hips over there and then like, so it's it's just one of those things that it changes mm -hmm. and so ensign got on the mat again and said oh i don't i don't think i deserve to be a black belt right now mm -hmm. and so he demoted himself back to the purple belchy and it, so people, so the question is, how do I feel about it? Oh, and by the way, since this question got asked, he actually re-promoted himself back to Black Belch. Right. So, and it, how did that go down? That was John. He talked to his 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 instructor that gave him the black belt, right, John Lewis? From what I understand, I didn't read as much into that part of it. Mm -hmm. I was I was mainly just reading other people's. Um, takes on it mm -hmm. you know like their reaction but but you uh, didn't go to the source material <laughs> always no, go to the source about, material. about the concept more always so go to the source material about the concept. anyway um i'm not, I'm not but he had a conversation with john lewis mm. and john lewis said what what was the overall do you know what he said mm -mm. well whatever he said i i did go to the source material there you go and but i don't want to quote it exactly mm -hmm. but john lewis basically said look you deserved a black belt oh and you know what he said he said look Someone that's a doctor that became a doctor and then that's not practicing, but then they want to get back in the field, they don't not become a doctor. Right. They just go and learn the new techniques and get refreshed. Mm -hmm. They don't have to take their doctor tag off their door. Right, right. And he said, you're a doctor of jujitsu. You just got to get refreshed with the new techniques and get back into it. Mm -hmm. And Ensign 
said, okay. You know, he, he agreed with it and he promoted himself back to black belt. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, again, I think from my, from my perspective, um, I, I say good for him. I think both those actions I agree with. Mm-hmm. I think it's actually pretty cool that he demoted himself right. and, and said, you know what? I don't, I don't, I haven't been in the game. I got out of the game. And I don't deserve to be a black belt right now, so I'm not gonna put, I'm not gonna put it on. I'm disgracing the black belt. But I also see the mind flip of, hey, you know what? I fought and trained for a giant portion of my life, and I have innate knowledge that got me the black belt. And now I need to get back in the game, but I'm still a black belt. I I I really respect Ensign. I think he's a I think he's a guy with a lot of heart and pride and i respect his decision i think it's pretty simple from my perspective yep yeah it, that was, man it's one of those things where when you hear someone make a good point about one side of, of the whole deal you're like oh yeah that's true <laughs> and then you see someone else making an, an, when i saw it i was like dang that is good he that is so humble and he and he's really keeping it real he's like i'm mm-hmm. not a black belt i'm going to i think i'm a purple belt there here's where i am and then um chris howder who's um, mm-hmm. he's you know one of the original og, OG guys yeah. and brother guy is smart um he he said essentially kind of the same thing as, as john lewis where what did he say it's kind of the same thing where you you know jujitsu changes you can be changing whether you're doing it or not yeah. and you earned it you're the black belt you know your instructors um you know recognize you as a black belt you are a black belt regardless and just because you jump back on the wave of jujitsu and maybe weren't as good as at surfing, you know, you're still, you're still that, that black belt. Um, you just gotta, like how you said, you just gotta get refreshed with all the new techniques mm-hmm. if you want to, you know, be up to speed. And he said it way more eloquently than yeah. that, obviously, but man, read, reading now, it's like, dang, he's right, man. But, but he did say that it's like, it's kind of like false humility, which, um, I, I dig pretty much everything Chris Hutter has to say about jujitsu, but I couldn't really get there as far as me feeling that it was false in any way. No, nah, um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think so either. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't feel that, um, you know, whether or not I understood exactly what, what Chris was saying. Yeah, right I guess I could see what he's saying, where he could come to that conclusion a little bit, but right. I don't, I don't agree with that piece of it. I don't, because right. to me, it's actually, hey, look, guys, I don't think there's anything false about saying, hey, I am not good enough to be a black belt right now. So therefore I'm putting on, I think I'm about purple belt level. I know what it feels like to be a black belt. Right. And I don't feel like one right now. Yeah. I think that makes sense. Yeah. So, I mean, it does to me too. And, and But ultimately, I think it's it's however you, and I think your instructors have a lot to do with it as well, How however you want to see it. You know what I mean? Because there is a lot to be said for someone who will do that. Because a lot of guys, they get their black belt and they're gone. And yeah. they'll be like, hey. And some guys do it if they get their brown belt. Yeah. Their brown belt, I'm gone. I'm a brown belt. Cool. It does happen sometimes. It. But it shouldn't happen at all. What? Guys get their black belt and then stop training? Right. I know a few guys like that. But, mm. you know, so it's like, hey, Don't I got my that. black belt. And I'm not saying they chose to the, do the that thing the whole that's, time. Yeah, but. the thing that's weird about that, the thing that makes that surprising is that it, it takes a lot of dedication to get your black belt. And right. the only way you can have that much dedication is if you actually enjoy training jujitsu. Right. And if you don't enjoy training jujitsu, then you can go get your black belt. Why would you stop training? That doesn't make sense to me. It's kind of like the, the the fact that people talk about going through SEAL training, and they say, "Oh, do you really?" If some, if you just, if you, they think if you, you can make it through if you don't want to make it through. If you right. don't truly want to make it through, then guess what? You're you're probably not going to make it through. And it's the same thing with jujitsu. If you don't really enjoy it, if you're doing it just for the black belt. Right. It's kind of it's kind of hard to do it just for the black belt. That's my point. Just like if you're gonna go through SEAL training just to get your SEAL trident and just to claim, hey, I'm a Navy SEAL. If that's the only reason that you're doing it, it's gonna be hard for you to get through. Right. So, so I would imagine anywhere I would guess that it wasn't their only reason, but let's just say either that was a big reason to begin with, or just over time that started to be the the reason. Mm. You know, how, you know. I mean, people can fall in and out of that mindset and that trap. You know, where it's like I just want the that belt i want to walk around and be known as a black belt or whatever Mm -hmm. and then that mindset starts to just creep in their mind and it becomes like a major part of their thinking Mm -hmm. so it's like dang this works especially when frustration comes in and life that's that's one of the kind of cool things about no gi 
in the idea that and and everyone gives belts now with no gi i mean yeah. dean gives belts with no gi i mean i support giving belts with no gi yeah. even though guy never wears a gi and he doesn't need a belt right. but you know you say oh this guy's a black belt but one thing that is cool about no gi and kind of especially during the uh during the rogue years of no gi where it wasn't a thing yet yeah. and we were just doing it and there were guys at the time that were only didn't you start off training only no gi yep. yeah there were guys that only trained no gi so it was really a real thing of the belts literally didn't matter because right. they didn't exist yep. and then it was just how good are you right. where do you fall out on the totem pole of I can tap you, you can't tap me, but this guy can tap me, and I, you know what I mean? It, right. That there was something pretty cool about that yeah. because belts for me have never been a goal or anything, um, really. To me, to me, I just wanted to be better at yeah. at the jujitsu. Yeah, I mean, but regardless, that is a part of it for a lot of, I don't yeah, know, a lot, but yeah, for some people's thinking. So I think. With that way of thinking, I think I think he can be like that. They'll get a black belt and be like, "Oh, finally! Now I get to focus on my career." Yeah, you know, I'm a black belt. That's and I would. Cool. The other important thing about this is like, don't stop training jujitsu. Like, don't just stop cold turkey, man. That's not good. Yep. Even if you can only train a couple times a week or once, even if you train once a week, man, train yeah. once a week. You know, just to keep your head in the game keep your do at least you can see the new moves you can see where things are developing maybe that'll ignite your desire to get back on the mat more but don't stop training you know and even on the days when you don't want to there's one day when you don't want to train go train that day yeah you know yeah and, go train and that day what it does too a big part of it it is it keeps your body in tune with the jujitsu movement mm -hmm. just the general movement because that's what one of the things that ensign said where he was like my body wasn't moving the same mm -hmm. it wasn't moving and there's it's one thing to be like okay i'm getting older i'm less mobile but negative jujitsu move <laughs> yeah we don't know anything about that the but jujitsu movement there's a certain kind of movement that yeah. develops just kind of naturally yeah. you know when you're rolling all the yeah. time and if you lose that 10 years i could see you lose that so it's like dang my hip escape is really labored right now <laughs> and i it's, it's hard to do when it's so easy to do normally you know so uh, you know i can I, I can understand i see that you know yeah. um but yeah and, that's and this really goes with, with anything job. anything that you're doing like any you know where you find this also is people that are in business that whatever whatever level they advanced out of mm -hmm. they they then let's say it's a they they move out of a technical position and they move up to a management position mm -hmm. don't just walk away completely from the technical side right. like just go go do it once a week go get in the game make sure that you still understand so that you stay so that you stay in the game yeah and you don't lose you don't wake up because you were a black belt that's why you got promoted above into a management position you were a black belt on that technical side and they saw potential for you so when you walk away from it or when you move up don't just walk away completely stay in the game go do you know if you're in the military just because you got promoted to whatever a uh, company commander or a, or a staff guy on the battalion don't just say well i'm never going to go in the kill house again no 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 go in the kill house even if you can only do it once every week or or maybe once a month you just get to go and, and keep your head in the game you got to do that so you stay fresh you stay like you said you keep that mental game there whereas if you just walk away pff, you, you and when i would have guys that were senior to me come out and go through little blocks of training with us. Maybe they come out and go to the kill house with us for a day. Mm -hmm. They didn't know what they were doing. They didn't know what they were doing. Part of it was because they walked away for too long. Mm -hmm. But even when they didn't know what they were doing, you were still like, hey, man, good for him for coming out. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't like you said, oh, look at him. He doesn't know. I don't respect him. No, right. you're actually, actually the opposite is true. You'd say, oh, man, props, props to the boss here for coming out and getting after it with the boys for a day. Yeah. He doesn't know what he's doing, but maybe we can help him. Yeah. yeah. And if they had that mentality the whole time, Cause it's pretty, it's a lot easier to maintain a skill than it is to learn it. Yeah. So all you have to do, you're a black belt man, get on the mat once a week, you know, yeah. just, just get in there and roll with some people, roll yeah. them up. Yeah. But, um, I, back to Ensign, I dig it either way. I, I, I even dig it that he did it and then really <laughs> took some peer review and yeah. it was like, Hey, I maybe didn't look at it this it way. It was an open-minded decision-making yeah. process. Yeah. For he him. went back in, went to which, the source to I his support. instructor. Yeah. We support that one yeah. big time. Went back to the instructor, and he was like, "Hey," and he was like, "Yes, yes, sir." You know, that's kind of where it, where it all came from. And he and he went back to black belt. Even that, I can't help but respect. You know, mm -hmm. the whole situation. And what if this is like a whole side note? Uh -oh. What if what if you go like, um, like who gave you your black belt, Fabio? Right? No, Dean Lester. Dean. Okay, so let's say you you took ten years off. You came back and rolled with Dean. Oh no. And Dean was like, "Bro, 
I I am your instructor. I'm taking your belt. I'm giving you a purple belt. That would be awesome. But, but like, is that is that cool? Like, you, you know, as far as like, can you do that or what? Do, how do you feel about that? I I don't know, but that would be very cool to see that happen. <laughs> <laughs> even just even just oh, you want to hear you want to hear an old school story, an old school jujitsu story? Of course I do. <laughs> okay, this is awesome. So uh, back in the day, back in the day, I was a blue belt. Uh, Dean was, I think Dean was a blue belt too. He might have been a purple belt. Mm. And there was another person that was a blue belt at the time. My wife. Your wife was a blue belt. Was a blue belt. Dang. And she was good. She's a really good athlete. Is that how you met your wife? No, no. Oh, okay. She was. I, I imposed jujitsu upon her oh, once dang. we were married. Good. So you know it was all good, and we were training with Fabio, and Fabio's you know Fabio's great instructor, and and we were at the academy one day. And there's a, a guy from out of town in, right? And he's a purple belt. Mm -hmm. So, you know, purple belt, you know, you figure the guy's good. But this is back in the day, too. This is in the, in the mid-90s. So probably like right. 90, I want to say 96. Mm -hmm. And so this guy comes in from out of town. And, you know, there wasn't that many jiu-jitsu schools. In San Diego, there was like two, right? It was, that, it was Fabio, there was Rodrigo. I think that was it yeah. at the time. So... Anyways, this guy comes in. He's kind of a, he's probably 35 years old, probably 150 pounds, purple belt. So, you know, we're rolling and, and we're a little bit like, okay, the guy's a purple belt. Um, but there's that attitude of the guys know, the guy knows what he's doing. So I didn't roll with him, but I'm watching him. I'm rolling with Dean. We're doing our thing. And it's kind of the open mat period. And, <laughs> and Fabio has him roll with my wife. And so, my wife, you know, she's good. She's, but she's a, they're rolling. And he gets her in a choke. He gets her in a rear naked choke. And she buries her chin like a white belt, like a, like a defense, you know, I'm going to bury my chin so he's not going to choke me. He chokes her face. Mm -hmm. Like I'm talking legit, gets mm -hmm. after it on her face. <laughs> and she starts crying dang. and a little bit of blood. Oh, dang. And, she, you guys, oh, okay. Uh, so, so I'm just like, and so I hear her scream or whatever, like, uh, and then, and then, uh, you know, she gets up and he lets go and he's kind of like, oh, sorry, uh, blah, blah, blah. And Fabio looks at me, he goes, and the guy didn't know it was my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Fabio goes, Fabio goes, Jocko, you roll with him now. And I go, okay. <laughs> so I, even I, I was like, okay, I'm going to smash him, but I, didn't intentionally like assault him. I just smashed him. I mean, I I crushed him and submitted him, but I didn't like break his arm. And but I smashed him. And I was doing a lot of knee and stomach at the at the time, so I was just driving. You know, it was like an early version of the park bench. I was doing. <laughs> I had a knee in his neck and we're smashing him. And um and then I get done and I wore him out pretty good and fabio was like now i will roll with you and fabio tore him up and uh was like cracking arm bars on him and choking him and smashing him and then the guy's like the guy's like broken down and fabio is fabio said you're not a purple belt and i can't remember if he took his purple belt but he kicked him out and he said, don't ever come back here, and you're not a purple belt. And he, I think he took his purple belt and said, you're not a purple belt. No. You know, he, he's, he also said, I've, one thing I remember him saying is like, this girl's been training here for two and a half years. She's never been hurt. She's never had a problem. You come in here and hurt this girl, you're not a purple belt. You don't know what you're doing. Give me your purple belt. Mm. Yeah. So that was a cool demotion. Yeah. Courtesy of Fabio Santos, <laughs> old school jujitsu right there, son. Yeah. Dang. Yeah. That's, um, yeah. Different situation, though. Yes, it is a different right, situation, but but I think I I don't know. Maybe we need to see more demotions in jujitsu. That's know. that's a possibility. Maybe maybe I need to get started on that. <laughs> Demote myself right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, all right, that's awesome. But yeah, yeah, man. Old school jujitsu, Fabio. Yeah, but it's kind of interesting though, right? Because it that kind of falls the same in the same way, like in the same line as is is that acceptable for a professor to demote their student if they lost a step? Or once you earn that that 
black belt or the brown, whatever the belt is. Once you earn it, it's like you paid those dues. Yeah, that's, that's you know, it's that's a heart. Kind of a it's, tough one, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. I I don't know. I think I think I might be wrong in terms of the way people view it, but I think demotion is is kind of cool. <laughs> I think I think more demotions need to happen. Yeah. Like, oh, you haven't been coming to the gym for two years? Cool, G- give me your brown belt. You know yeah. what I mean? Hey, man, sorry, you know? Yeah. No one's ever going to come to my academy. Yeah, they, I know. No, I'm never going to I would it. say that that could be the case if the re- like if you're if you're this highly competitive f- f- uh, philosophy type team uh-huh. where you if you go out in a tournament you have to represent and that was the culture real rigid mm-hmm. like that then yeah but you know jujitsu for life you know you can take 10 years off jujitsu is kind of part of you or whatever mm-hmm. you were awarded this belt through your time yeah, maybe and, right. and efforts and stuff maybe like that right. then it's like now i gotta worry about all my time and effort yeah you that know? would scare people off that they go like oh, i don't right? want to go back because yep. i don't want to get demoted exactly yeah exactly now i gotta right. do it i gotta earn it back yeah <laughs> but like i said if there was a job that you had to do basically it's like if you have a job to do as a brown belt you have to represent you know like in a in a company or something you can't be the director of sales get that job and then now your performance sucks you know you can't yeah. be rem- because you have a job to do but like i said jiu-jitsu is not really a job where i don't know i mean when you're a brown belt in a school you have to go and help train the other people that's part of your job right yeah yeah you have to show up and train with me <laughs> right yeah yeah for sure and li- yeah if you're violating some yeah. you know some ethics or something like that then i mean even then you don't really take away the belt you take away their whole yeah, like, get out of here, you know. I but I think so. So the bottom line is, although I think demotions would be cool, I don't think it's probably going to happen. And yeah. I think that the I think that the tradition, because although I do believe I think demotions is a good idea, I also do like some of the traditional aspects of jujitsu. And one of the traditional aspects is when you get a belt, it's your belt. Yeah, you did it. You put in all yeah. that time, yeah. all that effort, all that knowledge. You know. All right, you get to keep your belt, people. <laughs> barely <laughs> but here's the here's the thing i think that's that's interesting about you know what's funny thing. is at the gym i will shout out things like like take that guy's take right. his brown belt like yeah. if a purple belt is really doing good yeah. against a brown belt i'll be like take his brown yeah. belt from him do it yeah or <laughs> yeah or yeah. i'm kind of an instigator uh, sometimes. yeah and i like that i like that that's part of our fun culture where, where you kidding. can say <laughs> <laughs> yeah. or if you roll with it let's say like um i'll do this with like my friends or whatever, if they're a brown belt and I, and it's you know same belt as mm-hmm. you, and you get them and you get them like kind of easy or with a new move or something that's real flashy or something, you take their belt and say like you don't deserve that right now. You know, we're gonna roll and you Echo. can't wear a belt. You know, Echo. but it's a joke. Dang, you know what dude. I mean? But I think that that's kind of what's in our minds anyway. So let's say a guy rolls in, he's a brown belt, then he's getting smashed or whatever mm. by like purple belts. Yeah, that's one of like, the, one of the best belt. things about jujitsu is that the belt. It doesn't really mean anything, does right? it? Right. Because yeah. you, if you're a black belt and you come in there getting smashed by blue belts, yep. no one's sitting there thinking, wow, he's a black belt. They're thinking, no, there's something wrong with him. Yep, exactly he's right. Not, no, no black belt here. Yeah. So that's that's one of the best things about jiu-jitsu is the truth is on the mat. So I guess it doesn't, you don't need to get demoted. Right. Your mere existence is a demotion yep. if you're not if you're not training. Right. So like, I, like it goes back to what I was saying where you put in all that time because really the belt is based on specific things. And those things, if you've done those things, you've taken... The time is one of them. The knowledge, the you know understanding of all this, all basically all all that the belt is based on, mm-hmm. that doesn't really go away. You put in that time, you have that knowledge, yeah. you yeah. know. All right, I think Echo's scared. I'm going to take his belt away, <laughs> <laughs> or maybe I'll take your belt away. Bring it. <laughs> hey, there's going to be about a 45 second break in the podcast right now. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all right. Next question, dead horse. Go. 